Good morning. It's been a little while. We've had a few more cancellations, but it's finally event day again. You'll notice I'm in my car, which is not normally where I start my event vlogs. I'm eventing from uni today, which I think I've only done once since I've been here in the two years, Rockingham last year. So things look a little bit different. I'm headed to Shelford to do the BE100, which is a new venue for us, so I'm excited about that, with Rochelle, who is also competing in the BE100. About to head up there now, so things can look a bit different. No Dan and no Mum, neither of my normal lovely camera people are free today so I have no idea how much of today you're actually going to see. I'm very hopeful that I'm going to get all three phases on camera but do you bear with, who knows, maybe this will be the first event I've done since I started vlogging in 2020 that won't make it to the internet. But yeah, I'm not really sure how to feel. I'm not feeling too nervous, but I think that's mostly because there's bigger issues on the horizon, like the fact that I have an exam at 9am tomorrow that I do not feel prepared for. So I'm kind of just taking it as it comes, but we're packed. I'm hoping I've not forgotten anything, and let's head up to the yard, get star plattered up, and let's go eventing, because that is something that has not been said enough in 2023. I bathed this pony last night. I cannot believe the state of this. We've made it! We're here at Shelford and Rochelle goes on Twinkle in all three phases before Star even starts so he's got a nice long morning of waiting although I'm calling it now I think her cross country and my dresses are going to clash because it's only about 15-20 minutes in that and you know how these things go. So I've got actually quite a nice relaxed start. I'm going to go watch her, do her dressage test and then go walk the cross country and then come back and start getting ready. Voiceover flow popping in to apologise for this awful course walk. We walked it whilst it was live, we were very rushed and as a result the videos are very shaky so sorry about that. <laughs> We are out walking the course at Shelford. It's lovely so far, very flat, which is giving perfect vibes for Star and I. We're at about fence 13 and it's a big table at fence two. No combinations till fence 11, but yeah, hopefully it'll be good. Rochelle's done our dressage and then when we get back, I'm gonna start getting ready for mine. So it's all things go now. thoughts from my phone as I've given David my camera in the hopes that he might make it back from Rochelle's cross country in time to get my dressage. I look like I've just been cross country, not like I'm just about to do dressage, but breathe. I am feeling, I'm feeling a little bit nervous. I was absolutely fine and then obviously I've just walked the show jumping in the cross country in quick succession. We saw a horse take a very unfortunate tumble in the cross country but I'm trying to sort of push that to the back of my mind. Dressage is up first and it's a nice enough test and the venue itself should suit Star. If I show you out the window, the dressage is over there and all the jumping is completely over on the other side. You can obviously see, oh my goodness, I'm a tomato. So yeah, this should work. Up until about two minutes ago, there was no tannoys because they'd stopped between the class and I was thinking, yeah, it's getting in. Because that's like the classic thing that would just excite me knows what we're doing now. But they've just started up again. 
but yeah ready to tackle the dressage one phase at a time he seems fairly chilled so far fingers crossed you will get to see my test otherwise it's gonna be a lot of waffling in this vlog trying to explain how my test actually went yay we did get dressage footage although i'm not sure if even that can salvage the absolute mess that is this event vlog i am so sorry guys it's a bit all over the place i was so grateful for rochelle and david for taking me and allowing me to get a run in before i went home for summer after the rubbish start to the season we've had but it certainly is different than eventing with mum and dan and it was just so much harder to get footage so i do apologize for that and i hope you enjoy what we do have i felt i should still post it anyway I also have the judge's comments on the sheet so I can tell you exactly what she made of the test and spoiler alert she was not a fan. So we got a 6.5 for that very first centre line and then we got a 7 for that first 15 metre circle and then we got a 6.5 for this 15 metre circle with the comment that we need more suppleness in our bend. So I did the same tactic that I've talked about recently with Star where I just walked and trotted him in the warm up because sometimes historically when he's been a bit fresh that has been like the path to success it tends to keep him on the calmer side as a result you can see we really threw away marks in that first transition to canter it got a six and the comment was it was a little bit laboured and then he was long in his frame and on the circle we got a 6.5 and the comment was that we were on our forehand I actually think I really didn't need to kind of what do you call it like like tiptoe around him and only walk and trot in the warm-up he has been so so good recently that i could absolutely have pushed him in the warm-up and got much nicer paces out of him and that's something i'm going to do going forward to bca so i'm not sure if you saw that he jogged there right at the start of the long rain free walk that meant the judge gave us a four and then to be honest it really affected how i rode the rest of the long rain free walk because he's not particularly stretching or moving forward but when they jog right at the start of the long rain free walk it's so difficult to have the confidence to then really push them and ask them to do more because you're like Ooh, i'm worried they're gonna jog again at that point i probably should have because i'd already got a penalty for jogging hadn't i we got a six for this hole and that's kind of the one thing on the test that i think is maybe a little bit harsh i think that hole is not bad but it is what it is judge wasn't a big fan and then we got a seven for our transition to trot here which was nice it does just look a little bit labored it didn't feel labored when i rode it but at least now i know moving forward that i need to ask for more because he is responding and being so good we got a six for our transition to canter and then we got a six for this 20 metre circle with the comment that he was on his left shoulder. So, you know, to be getting so many sixes, we got a six for our transition to trot that you're about to see as well. It's not where we want to be. We want to be 6.5s and 7s, but I have to still be happy with the main theme of Star is behaving, he's getting on with his job, he's being really good. We got a six for the centre line and for the halt, which wasn't square. It wasn't as good as the last one. So yeah, on the whole, not the most pleasing score, but she was a harsh judge, I should say that. 39.5 for that dressage. That's over 10 marks more than his last event at Goring. I haven't seen the video, so I'm not gonna comment. But scores aside, I'm glad that he behaved. It's becoming a recurring theme that he's behaving for the dressage, which is good. But yeah. 39.5. Show jumping time. I'm just trying to think about it one phase at a time. <laughs> twinkle. Try not to get nervous. Oh, Rochelle finished fifth. If anyone was interested. Yeah, ready to go jumping. With every bit of day, and nothing that can pull us under. You want to take the pain away. So this is Flo Carter with Amy Star, number 488. We say we would say that we're better than that. We're better than that. Nice. I know you know, so I was holding on, holding on.
gosh, now I really do that one. On paper, possibly not the best start of the day, 39.5 in a poll, but in practice, I've been really happy with both. I was so much more confident in that show jumping round. I'm coming out of it like happy rather than the last two event vlogs where I've come out of the show jumping like holding back the tears. <laughs> so happy. Can you go straight up? Yeah. One, two. <laughs> that was worse. <laughs> that was so bad. So lovely people so I went ahead and bought my cross country video because I was so buzzing with my round and the footage I had was first of all few and far between I was the penultimate person on the course all day and it did not do justice to how good he felt because all I had was like this first fence on video which as you saw from the other angle, I actually buried him into it. But that was the only fence on course. The rest of it flowed beautifully. So here is my round and I will kind of chip in with my thoughts. But on the whole, what I was so happy about was that throughout the round, I don't think it looks like I'm meddling much. And you know what I'm like, I am a meddler. But I just sat, I felt things, I let them come out of our stride and I was so happy with how Star was. Here, it looks really funny because it's just a ditch by itself but from where you came and where you were riding it you couldn't see it because the ground was sloping slightly so you really didn't have much notice like you didn't know if the horse had locked onto it or not seen it and that also doesn't do justice to the angle you had to come down and jump the fence on so i was pretty pleased because I felt like we were getting into a nice rhythm early enough on. He was listening, he wasn't pulling because I have sometimes had issues with Star being a little bit strong. He's been a lot, lot better since he's been in his Waterford at the end of last season. Here, he just kind of wasn't really looking where he was going, but saw a lovely shot. These kind of hedgy fences are so nice to ride at because you feel like you can really attack them. That said, I don't think I really attacked this one that much. And as a result, we're a little bit close. But on the whole, it was just flowing nicely. The course was going well. He was giving me a lovely feeling. And the nice thing about this 100 is that, is that you had quite a long time before any of the serious questions. Because like I said, there was no combinations until fence 11. But once they did come, they started coming thick and fast. So this table was fence 10. And I very deliberately chose to kind of keep him in a bit of a show jumpy canter down that long straight bit. Because he can sometimes take a little bit longer to bring back. And I knew that I had some of the trickier combinations on course coming up. So I wanted him in a nice canter. You can see me really be like, come back there. This was interesting because you obviously turned a very sharp corner then you had to go right down the hill and then you had to jump that on a totally different angle so that was the fence on course that had the most problems all day I think and that's understandable then I felt like I opened him up a little bit more down here but in the video it doesn't really look like it he kind of just he covers so much ground that he never really looks like he's going that fast. This was quite a long one stride, so I was pleased that he made it feel easy and it kind of reminded me he has got such a big open stride and I can trust it. So another lovely shot to that fence. I was trying to work out whether that was the same fence I jumped at Osberton on Assey because it's also a B-E-D-E -E event and I definitely recognized it. I was a little bit nervous about this fence because it was so upright and it had the little turkey things that were very lucky on the sides but he was a good boy just popped it and then I think he might have jumped me a little bit out of the saddle at this next fence oh bye Flo <laughs> but he was just ambling along here he did get a little tiny bit stronger which you can see in the next combination because I wanted to hold him for a bit of a smaller stride and he kind of got right into the bottom of it because he was like no we're moving we're moving so I, at this point, I'm pretty sure I just stopped paying attention to my watch and went, hold on, we're going to get home nice and, and friendly. There's nothing on the line. 39 went by dress, I was on a pole. It's much more important that we get home sort of happily and listening so we don't make a precedent of really galloping at the end because at scoring, I, he got a little bit stronger at the end and I sort of let him because there was a placing on the line and I wanted to get home. But no, I was really, really happy with that round. I feel like the whole thing looks comfortable, happy, like we were really listening to each other getting on as a pair and it was quite flat so it suited us quite well but I feel like a few more runs like that and I'll be feeling really really established with him at this level so yeah pretty chuffed with the feel it's one of those days where the feel is a lot more important than the scores on the doors here's just another angle of the dash which I want you to enjoy through the water that 
smoke. Over they go. We made it home and I'm talking to you en route down to the field. So you can see Star is very happy and right there is Twinkle. He was also a very good girl. Sorry about today's vlog, I know it's probably one of my shorter and least exciting event vlogs. It makes you appreciate how much mum and Dan both do on the ground when we're eventing, getting all that like little background footage that makes these vlogs more interesting. But I nearly didn't pick up the camera vlog and then I thought that would not be very in keeping, so decided I would do it anyway. Anyway, quick recap of the day, so there's not been much chatter. 39.5 dressage. I haven't seen the video yet. You'll have heard my voice over on the test. We got a few fours and sixes for our walk and trot. I say a few fours, I think a four for our job, which was unfortunate. So I won't comment because I always go, oh, I thought it went really well. And then I watch it back and I'm like, oh, no, I didn't actually. So you'll have heard my thoughts. Show jumping, I actually thought that was our best round of the season. I know we had a, a pole, which for him is like, not likely, not, not often that happens, but I don't think that reflects how he jumps. Oh, Atty has just seen his bestie, reunited. Cross country, clear with two time penalties, so five seconds too slow. Honestly, best round I've done with him this year. It felt so comfortable, so easy. Oh, got bopped there. Yeah, really, really, really chuffed with it. I probably could have made up those five seconds if there'd been something on the line, but there wasn't obviously no placing today. I think we finished about 13th, but I was just happy with how it felt. I don't know how much cross country footage there is. I don't know how much of that you'll have seen, but it flowed. That made me so happy. Finally, I think we're getting there. I said to Rochelle afterwards a few more runs like that, and I think we'll be super duper comfortable at 100. He makes it so easy. Yeah. Okay, Stars said he's wants to get in the field, so that's it. See you soon with some more event vlogs. Bye.